Certainly feels like we're heading into a disaster zone now. Yeah, this is where it starts to get real. You can't pretend that you're doing anything other than going into a damaged reactor. Well, on, the, on their face. Okay, serious business. For a serious place. Ready to go, ready to go. So what I can see there is all of the used fuel assemblies going down into the water. They're covered by about three or four metres of water and a lot of rubble and debris on top of them. So that's all radioactive waste right there. What you have in there is the used fuel. So that fuel had already made electricity. It, would, it had finished its cycle and it was put in this cooling water for a, what should have been a temporary period of time. Then you had the accident and there was an explosion where this ceiling collapsed and so it's now covered in rubble. Yeah. So the challenge they have is first of all to clear the rubble and debris away from the top of that, check the fuel assemblies and then remove them carefully as they had in the next door reactor unit 4. So effectively this is the belly of the beast. Yeah, exactly, we are right here at the worst nuclear accident that has happened in any western country in the 50 year history of nuclear power. What's extraordinary for me is that even then it still hasn't been radiation that's been something that's been killing people. It hasn't been an environmental catastrophe. It hasn't been a human health catastrophe. But everyone is entitled to believe that we have to be able to do it better than this. You can't deny that this is a serious situation that no one wants to be managing. And they'll be managing this for a long time. How do we make the decision in the face of a challenge like climate change where we need so much clean energy urgently for a world that's going to be 10 billion people if we use a situation like this to turn our back on a whole family of technologies we would be making a grave error for the future. Don't forget this reactor was designed in the late 1960s and commissioned in the early 1970s. This is back in the days when seat belts didn't uh, cars didn't even necessarily have seat belts. Now we have an entirely different set of technology choices and we have a huge new suite of challenges. So we need to acknowledge the reality of this, but we can't turn our back on all of this potentially incredibly good technology. Well, what sort of readings are we getting in here at the moment? About 30 microsieverts per hour okay. at the door. Now that we're closer to the spent fuel pool, about 126 microsieverts per hour. So that's probably, what, 800 times higher than what we were getting just a couple of K down the road yesterday. That's exactly right. So that's a crucially important point. We have as high radiation readings here, but only here. What we've seen all around the region is completely different. Even in townships and villages that are extremely close to the nuclear power plant, it's nothing like this. It's readings that would be normal in other parts of the world and it's readings that we know are safe for human health. It's the beauty of having the ability to detect radiation. We can see that it's here. So a lot of people would say, <laughs> This is the exact reason why we shouldn't have a nuclear plant in Australia. Yeah, you say it is. Exactly, because in the 50 year history of using technology, this is the day it all went wrong and it still hasn't resulted in any deaths from the radiation. Not one death. Not one death from the radiation from this incident. If this is the worst that we can throw at nuclear power, and we have had a terrible, terribly bad incident, but it hasn't resulted in deaths from radiation. There is an important lesson to be learned in that in terms of the choices we make for energy in this century. We have to be really careful with that information and what we do with it. It's an absolute disaster here. Yeah, it looks like an absolute mess. And I love what this reactor did for its nearly 40 year life, which was provide heaps of carbon free electricity for Japan, which kept their greenhouse gas emissions low. But there's a lot about this reactor and this design that I don't like. I don't like that the used fuel pools are up high. I don't like that the diesel generators were way down low. It was all wrong for the sort of risks that they were facing. And that's why we've got to understand this was a 1960s design commissioned in the 1970s. That's not the sort of thing anybody has an option to build these days. Okay, that's, that's fine. Okay, can, can I just get, I just want to get the counter up. Can you get us on the counter here? Can you just go wide with us looking at the counter? That's it. Quick. Okay, okay, okay. What's it? We've got to back off. Okay. Too close. So that counter is just going up and up. 
So, what? 50 micro seconds. That's enough, that's enough. We need to leave? Yeah. Time to go? Mm -hmm. Can we just get a couple? Hello, I'm Tom Steinfett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.